It's been two months since our last big adventure. In the meantime, we've been traveling around the state of Indiana, exploring its beaches and its many national forests and state parks. I'm super excited for this upcoming adventure out west. Stay tuned for part one of our Wild West road trip. We've loaded up our car and we're leaving Indy during a torrential downpour. This thunderstorm was so bad that we and many other cars pulled to the side of the road to let the storm ride out. Visibility was nearly zero and we were under a tornado watch. However, the storm warnings never deterred our excitement for being back on the road and being able to see some new locations. I've been looking forward to this trip for a long time. We have nine days to get as far west as we can for as cheap as we can. Upon crossing the Mississippi River and reaching the Missouri state line, the rain finally slowed down and the storm clouds created what was an impressive sunset for our first night of the drive. Later that evening, we reached Kansas City. As a big fan of architecture, I think their skyline is one of the dopest. Our goal for this stretch is to make it halfway through Kansas before we sleep. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna hop in the back seat and hang out with my bro bro. After a long nine hours of driving, we decided to pull over to the closest rest stop. about 6 30 a.m we're here about to, a little bit past Topeka Kansas catching a sunrise last time we've been to Kansas was last it was in September so this is our first time driving to Kansas during the summer I realized how stuffy it got here summer weather in this part of Kansas can be described as very humid subtropical it can change to a more dry and arid climate the further west you go. It's no secret that Kansas is very rural, and there are little to no service stations between here and the border town of Cancerado, so we decided to stop in Salina to fill up on gas and get showered. I gotta be honest, I was super nervous about showering at a truck stop. I heard a gas station shower for the first time, and it was the best shower in the world. It was warm, and after being on the road for 15 hours, it was perfect. However, we ran into a huge problem. Ashley left the headlights on and it killed our battery. Fortunately, it didn't take us long to get help from the locals. One of my favorite things about traveling is meeting good people. You know, they're willing to help out, you know, not just be a bystander. So, uh, we have a really small battery in our Honda. <laughs> so, uh, it's honestly too small for our Honda. That's why it dies Corvette pretty battery. often. Yeah, it's a Corvette battery. So, so the reason it dies so much is that if we even leave the lights on, if we leave the blinkers on while the car is off, it's gonna die. So we're here in the middle of Kansas, uh, a little bit past, a little bit past Topeka, about an hour outside of Topeka, and we're at this gas station. The car is not starting. We're freaking out. I'm thinking it's the alternator immediately because it wouldn't start. But we ended up having a good connection, so we are on our way. Uh, we got helped by a guy named Roy. Uh, he was telling me that his Chevy runs on moonshine. <laughs> that it cleans the pistons. <laughs> yeah, along with a list of other things, but yo, know, good people. Good peeps. With a full tank of gas and a battery fully charged, we were back on the road and on our way to Colorado. One thing traveling frequently has taught me is patience. Nothing builds character like thinking you're being stuck in the middle of Kansas. But anyway, back to the road trip.
Later that afternoon, we pulled over to a picnic area to make lunch and find a creative way to make Ashley and I some coffee. Well, Starbucks, anywhere in sight. <laughs> so we have to find a way to make some coffee. Uh, Ashley's dad luckily gave us this awesome, what else is this thing called? I don't know, like a single burner. This awesome single burner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see if it works. Right here in the middle of nowhere, Kansas, but still beautiful. It's hot. <laughs> But now it has a nice breeze out here, so it's legit. Anyway, I want to tell you guys about our, about our future travel plans. Um, we should be in northern Colorado at about 2 o'clock today. So we're probably going to check out the city for a little bit or, you know, the mountains, whatever's out there. Because, you know, we usually wing everything. But um, we also have some friends that live in northern Colorado. And uh, they live in an RV. They're RVers. And they live on a pocket farm. So that'll be absolutely just a wild experience if, something I've never seen before, so I can't wait to see that. From there, we head up north to Wyoming, probably down through Utah, perhaps through Arizona. 30 minutes later, we reach the Colorado border. I'm super excited to be back here. Our last time here, we visited the Rocky Mountains in Essex Park, and it was an unforgettable experience. I think it'll be the same way, or even better this time around. Shortly after crossing the border, we stopped at the first roadside attraction, the I-70 Diner. One more stop for coffee and some fetch plan. <laughs> I'm super excited to be back in Denver and to see their skyline with the mountains in the background. It's just nice to see this big changed landscape. However, we won't be stopping in Denver this time. We're heading up to the northernmost tip of Colorado in a small mountain town of Livermore. Minutes later, we arrived to Luke and Katie's RV home, nestled in the middle of an open field and surrounded by mountains. We haven't seen them since college, so I'm pumped they're willing to show us their home and give us what will be a pretty unique camping experience. Officially made it here to our friend's house. Uh, there are RVers, which is fucking awesome. And they stay on this awesome apocryphal form in the middle of the mountains. I mean, we just got here, and this is already one of the best experiences of my life, because <laughs> I mean, it's just serene, it's quiet. Definitely looking forward to tonight. We then set up camp, prepared dinner for the night, and chose to stay in to relax after our long drive. Dinner with Luke and Katie was seriously the best. We just uh, we just took the cover off of our tent so we can see the stars better. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, this camera won't, totally won't do it any justice. No but, way. Not even mine. But the stars are just perfect out here. I mean, and there's like literally nothing around for miles. I think the closest grocery store is like 30 minutes 30, to an hour away. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to tomorrow. We're going to wake up. We're going to see the sunset. It's going to be awesome. We're going to go to Wyoming. Yeah. Yeah, it'll definitely be cool. <laughs> oh, my back is hurting laying like this. <laughs> Peace out, guys. <laughs> Deuces. <laughs> It's cold. 
up here in Colorado though. This, it was freezing last night. Oh, so cold. Hey guys, we just woke up from an awesome night of sleep in this tent. Uh, right here in the middle of northern Colorado. Sunrise is spectacular out here. It feels like the adventure has officially began today. Later on in the morning, we met up with Luke and Katie. They showed us around the farm, reminisced on the old college days, and they decided to introduce us to some of the alpaca. They're gonna tour the old alpaca farm. <laughs> this is insane. It was awesome to be this up and close with farm animals. It was unlike anything I've ever experienced before. There were 46 in this barn and over 500 on the farm altogether. Their mannerisms were pretty funny to say the least. You know, they just kind of spit <laughs> and stare and kind of bump and hump each other. Overall, they're really sweet creatures and they seem pretty curious, just as we were. Oh, you wanna hang out? <laughs> yeah, he wants to hang out now. Afterwards, we headed back to Luke and Katie's RV to have some breakfast, tell them about our future travel plans, and say our goodbyes before we headed back on the road. <laughs> This will be an experience I'll never forget. Next up, we're crossing into a new state that we've never been to before.